I came out here to my wood pile the other day to collect some firewood and I found something that I did not expect. This fun little guy right here. And now the only question is, is this the kind that you eat or the kind that kills you? And how do you find out which? see this mushroom growing out of a log, by the end of this video I will either have eaten it or not eaten it, and I haven't decided which because I'm not sure if it's going to kill me or not. I like to think that in the modern world we really are still hunter-gatherers, it's just that we're very good at hunting down things in grocery store and very good at gathering food off of our plates in restaurants. Although that is a joke, there is an element of truth to it. In some sense, we are adapted to the environment of grocery stores and restaurants. We know how to read menus, we know which aisles to hunt down, we know how to read nutrition labels, we know how to decide between two different brands of the same food. In short, that's an environment in which we have confidence in our ability to pick foods and eat them and not die afterwards. What's so interesting to me is that same level of professionalism and competence that you and I have at navigating a grocery store or a restaurant is the same thing that you can have when you're approaching wild food sources like this. When I was about 14 years old, I hiked up King's Peak, which is the highest peak in Utah, on a week-long 50-mile backpacking trip with my uncle. Now, my uncle is an avid backpacker, and he knows a lot about the outdoors. On our first day up the trail, we were going to eat freeze-dried spaghetti for dinner, and along the way, he found a couple of mushrooms. Now, my uncle had enough confidence in knowing that those mushrooms were edible that he just picked them and put them in his pack, and that night, we had freeze-dried spaghetti reconstituted with fresh mushrooms picked in the wilds of the Uinta Mountains. Pretty darn cool. But the thing is, I don't have that same level of confidence with this mushroom. I love mushrooms, but again, I don't know if this is the good kind or the bad kind. So, that's what we're gonna figure out now. Okay, here goes nothing. Okay, so let's take a look at this guy. Um, I've read online that what you want to pay attention to when you're evaluating a mushroom is four different things. You can look at the cap here and evaluate different features on the cap. You can look at the gills and underside and evaluate different features of those. You can also look at the stalk and evaluate its features. And then the final thing you can look at is the roots. Obviously, I can't see much of the roots. I'm assuming they're embedded deeper within the tree trunk, but at least I have, you know, the stalk and I have the gills and the underside, and I also have the cap to evaluate. So another thing I'm going to do is start cutting it open and taking a look at inside side. Okay, so that's the stalk. Let's cut that open and look inside. Okay, so you've just got this uh, pale yellow white flesh. And then here are the gills. Let's cut this thing in half. Okay, okay, and again we have this white firm flesh. And when I smell it, it certainly doesn't smell bad, but, uh, I mean, it doesn't smell really good either. It just smells kind of mushroomy. Okay, so far so good. That's some really good information. Let's go plug that in online and see what we can find out about what kind of mushroom this might be. So it turns out that trying to identify mushrooms is way, way harder than I thought it would be. For one thing, there are over 10,000 different kinds of mushrooms that have been discovered so far. And that is only a small fraction of the 5.1 million different kinds of fungi that have been discovered. To make things worse, there's a lot of technical knowledge uh, involved in identifying the different characteristics of mushrooms. You have to know the names for the different parts of mushrooms and know how to describe them. For instance, sometimes spots on the top are called scales, and sometimes they're called warts and you need to know the difference between those two, otherwise you could make a mistake and end up with the poisonous kind of mushroom, not the edible kind of mushroom. After going through a huge number of websites and a couple of phone apps, I landed on what I think is the mushroom, Hemifoliota popolnea. 
It matches all the visual characteristics and it grows out of the end of cottonwood logs. Boom, headshot. So I've also looked at some of the lookalikes and I am pretty confident this is Hemifoliota poplinea. I would say maybe 75%, 80% confident. So now the question is, am I going to eat it? And the answer is no. The reason why it has to do with asymmetric payoffs for risks. I first learned about this concept while reading Nassim Taleb's books. I've linked to them in the description below. Now, sometimes risks have symmetric payoffs. For instance, if we were to play a game where we flip a coin, and if the coin lands on tails, then I pay you $10, and if it lands on heads, then you pay me $10, that is a symmetric payoff, right? One payoff is positive, the other payoff is negative, and they're absolutely symmetric in regards to each other. An asymmetric payoff is where either the positive payoff or the negative payoff is uh, larger or smaller than the other payoff. So for example, if we were to play Russian Roulette, right, one bullet in one of six chambers, and I were to pay you $10, then your max positive upside is $10, and your max negative downside is death. So you have a very asymmetric payoff there. Now, if I were to eat this mushroom, I would have a highly negatively asymmetric payoff. Like I said, I'm 75% sure it's edible. So if I were to eat it, I would get a couple of mouthfuls and also a sense of pride and accomplishment in having successfully identified a mushroom. However, if I'm wrong, then I might die. That is a highly negative asymmetric payoff. Even for the sense of pride and accomplishment, it's just not worth it. Especially considering that although this species, Hemifoliota poplinea, assuming I do in fact have the right species, is edible, it's not regarded generally as very tasty. Now the tricky thing about risk is that you are always, always, always encountering risk, and you need to learn how to not only mitigate those risks, but also how to navigate them and how to accept them consciously. A while ago, I made a few videos about beef jerky, I'm linking to one of them here, where I talk about uh, responsibility and about the risks inherent in eating beef jerky, which is basically raw meat. Now, with making my own beef jerky, I feel confident in those decisions. Even though there are risks in handling raw meat and risks in drying meat, uh, I feel like those risks are worth it and I feel like I have enough knowledge and competence in regard to those risks to go ahead and say, yes, like I accept the risks and I will eat my beef jerky. However, with this mushroom, I just don't know enough. I just do not know enough. So even though I love mushrooms and even though I found this mushroom and even though I really want to eat it, it's going into the trash. However, I am confident enough in my identifying ability to taste it just a little bit. As I've looked at online identification guides, a lot of them have said you can taste the mushroom under certain circumstances and subject to certain stipulations. First of all, you ought to know for sure what kind of mushroom it is, or at least be reasonably confident which mushroom it is. Like I said, I have about 75 to 80% confidence that this is in fact Hemifoliota poplinea, and so I have that necessary level of confidence. I've also looked at other lookalikes and decided that this is not them. The next thing is, according to these sources I've read, you do not, in fact, want to take a bite out of the mushroom. Instead, you just want to lick it. And finally, you want to wash your mouth out carefully and thoroughly afterwards. Do not swallow the water. So, how did my mushroom taste? Well, it was mostly tasteless, I would say ever so slightly unpleasant. So if I was stuck in the woods and starving, I actually probably would take the chance and go ahead and eat this. As I was doing the research to figure out what kind of mushroom this is, I actually had another interesting thought. I kept thinking about that comparison I made at the beginning of this video, how in the modern world we go and hunt and gather and forage in supermarkets, and how uh, in the pre-modern world, if you were out in the woods, you would effectively do the same thing. You'd go down the aisles of the grocery store of nature and try to find the right products and identify them with their packaging, and hopefully you'd also know how to prepare those in the best way possible. I really did feel like Neolithic man inside a modern supermarket trying to figure out what to do with a package of macaroni and cheese. I have something here that might be food, but I don't really know how to activate that potential. I don't know how to find those latent possibilities and then bring them into existence. And so for 24 hours, I've been stuck with a mushroom that I haven't known if I could eat or not. There are so many mushrooms out there, and even so many edible mushrooms, and yet because of my lack of knowledge and my lack of experience, there's all kinds of food out there and potential that I just cannot access yet. Amazingly, at least in theory, I or you could become competent enough at foraging in nature that it would be kind of like going into a grocery store. You know which environments and areas to forage in, you know how to identify the products by their packaging, and you also know how to prepare the food in an effective and nutritious way. That's actually a level of competence, that's actually a skill that you can have. Finally, if you are interested in doing mushroom hunting, I would just caution you about any information that I provide in this video and also any information that you find anywhere else. Hunting for mushrooms is inherently dangerous, and although I wish you the best, I cannot be liable for any advice that I give here. I just cannot. Except maybe for this one piece of advice. There are old mushroom eaters, and there are bold mushroom eaters. 
there are no old bold mushroom eaters. Hey, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, we've got a ton more. I'm also linking here specifically to a podcast episode where we talk about the nature of risk and how to confront those risks. We talk about Nassim Taleb and a lot of other ideas about risk management. If you've had a good mushroom hunting adventure, we would love to hear about it in the comments below. Also, we would sure appreciate the like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Thanks so much, and we will see you next time. Uh, and look, here's another one. I'm gonna have to go check out those online databases again.